Welcome to the rest of anatomy class. We've got like a whole list of stuff to do. Most of the stuff we're going to talk about today, we're going to do human respiratory system, digestive system, um, urinary system, and then the male and female reproductive systems. We're not going to do the cat, urinary, and reproductive systems because there's so little to do. It's like five things, and I'm not going to dig out a cat. Stink up the place just because of that. So, we'll continue on. We'll start with the first thing. We'll grab the head. Start with the digestive system. First thing we got is the nasal cavity. You know where the nasal cavity is. Inside the nasal cavity or the concha? The kind of circular, kind of shaped bone ridges coming out into it. We have the nasal pharynx. Remember how we had the pharynx? Pharynx goes from nasal pharynx. It's back here at the back of the nasal cavity. It then becomes the oropharynx, and then it becomes the laryngeal pharynx. Those are the pharynxes. Uh, we've got opening to the auditory tube. If I turn this point right there, I've got an opening to an auditory tube. Here's the other opening to the auditory tube. These are the tubes that actually allow your ears to pop. Um, let's see. Uvula. We don't have a good example of an uvula. It'd be right there, if anywhere. Um, we talked about the oral pharynx. Epiglottis, we don't have a great model of an epiglottis, so we'll pass that. Let me make a note of my thing. Laryngeal pharynx, that's right above the larynx, which I will use this model to demonstrate. Laryngeal pharynx, right here above the larynx. We have larynx. Vocal cords, we don't have a good model of vocal cords. We won't do vocal cords. Thyroid cartilage. See this huge honking shield shaped piece of cartilage. This huge honk and shield shaped piece of cartilage is thyroid cartilage. Underneath it is a little itty bitty one called the cricoid cartilage. I think on this one it's number 12. It's the cricoid cartilage. And then we have the trachea. You can see the trachea because it's got the cartilage rings all the way through it. Now the trachea goes down here. Carina splits. Trachea splits at the carina. Labeled 21. And then we have primary bronchi. And lastly, we have the diaphragm, which, there, diaphragm. And that's the human respiratory system. Okay, we'll move on to the digestive system. We'll start with the easy ones. We'll grab their head again. Salivary glands, parotid, right there under cheeks. Submandibular, underneath the mandible. On this side, underneath the tongue, is the sublingual. Those are the salivary glands. Esophagus, we'll go follow the esophagus inside the body. See the esophagus coming down behind the trachea? It dumps out at the inferior esophageal sphincter, which is right here at the stomach. The sphincter is the valve into the stomach, which brings us to the stomach. We have a stomach. There it is. And if we pop open the stomach, the region right here at the top part of the stomach is the cardia. This is the inferior esophageal sphincter, also known as the cardiac sphincter. There's the cardia. This big curved part here is the fundus. This is the body, the pylorus, and the pyloric sphincter. And you notice these huge ridges inside. Those are rugae. And those are the parts of the stomach. And we'll continue on to the um, small intestine. I'm going to put this guy back together for a second so we can go through this easier. Let's see, we're going to have to put some parts back in. Sorry about the delay. I have to quickly reassemble this guy. Sorry. There. There. Okay. We'll follow this along. The stomach dumps here in the beginning of the small intestine. This is the duodenum. First 10 inches is duodenum. 
If I were to ask about it, I'd probably tag it right there. What's this part of this organ? Duodenum. Then, it continues on, becomes the jejun jejunum, which is in the middle of it, and then it dumps out to become the ileum. When I test on it, I'll probably ask at the, either I'll ask at the end, at the beginning, or I'll say here in the middle section. End is an ileum. And it dumps out here at the ileocecal valve, right there, the ileocecal valve. The ileocecal valve is right there, there it dumps into the large intestine. It's got the cecum, and we can see the appendix. It comes off the cecum there. Now, quick reassemble the cecum, and add the transverse, transverse back. All right. Now, we'll go through, okay, we did the cecum. This part, colon, where it goes up, ascending colon, takes a right angle turn here at the flexor, flexes here, to become the transverse colon. This is called the hepatic flexor. It's right here by the liver. It goes across transverse colon to the spleen, where it takes a turn down become, at the splenic flexor, flexes down goes down here, goes into S-shape to the sigmoid colon, and gets dumped out in the back at the rectum. So those are parts of the, of the small intestine. Now you know, it's got this muscular tendon kind of line going along it. That is called the tenia coli. It keeps the thing squished like an accordion. These individual little kind of lobes formed by the accordion squishing, those are called hostra. And that brings us done with the intestinal tract and brings us to the liver. Okay, we'll just reassemble this here and talk about the liver. And the liver, what do we got for liver? We pull out the liver, we take a look. We've got a hepatic artery. And then we have a hepatic portal vein. In this case, it's purple. It's right next to the hepatic artery. The hepatic vein is up here, dumps into the vena cava. Now, while we're talking to the liver, we can see a gallbladder. We can see a cystic duct. Now, these ducts all connect down here. I will quickly locate here to a common bile duct. right here by the pancreas. And these dump into the duodenum. And we'll also, while we're here, we'll point out the spleen. That's on this section 